good morning or good afternoon rather thank you all for coming out once again our 100 angels have provided it's beautiful yesterday was a little bit of a washout for us we were supposed to have a, a motorcycle ride called ride to remember unfortunately it did get rained out but we had a beautiful day spent it with family and friends remembering our 100 um, it was nice but this is beautiful and uh, our angels always come through for us Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's been an incredibly long 10, 20 years for all of us. Um, some have survived better than others, but we're still here and we're still together. And we're so blessed to have this beautiful park. We have some wonderful speakers for you today that are here to talk about what happened and just what happened over the 20 years and going forward. And always, always remembering our 100 who passed. They, they are why we're here. Um, I would like to welcome Viviana Fernandez. She is going to be she's going to be singing our national anthem for us this morning. from our local high school here in junior high so we are very fortunate to have a group of children here today with us young adults um, at this time we'd like to welcome father Robert Marciano to do the invocation may I ask you to stand for the prayer please let us pray Heavenly Father we bow our heads this day on this sacred place to remember with fond devotion those whom we lost 20 years ago. Time has moved on, days and years have gone by, but our hearts are heavy still, for we miss each of them in our lives. We remember too those who struggle with illness and pain from that fateful night, the injured, the families, and the heroes of police and fire and medicine who did all they could to save those in peril. Lord, we have seen such great tragedy but we have been touched by even greater goodness. As we stand here today, we fulfill our pledge to never forget them. We remember each one of them, and with your spirit still with us, we ask your strength in our weakness so that we can face tomorrow with hope in our hearts and peace in our lives. For we are always proud to be one nation, one state, and one city under you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we're going to have um, Governor Donald Kachiri say a few words. He, as you know, was governor at the time of this tragic event and was out of town but came home. And um, he has been with us ever since, and he's been an amazing supporter of all of us, the survivors, victims, families, our 100. So thank you for being here, and sorry about the traffic. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Gina. Uh, what an inspiration to all of us, isn't she? Is she an inspiration or what? Uh, Father Massiano, uh, let me just publicly thank you uh, for ministering to all of us so much. Uh, as many of you know, Father Massiano 
was chaplain of the Warwick Fire and Police. He was there the night of the fire. He's been there for the families, all of us, every step along the way. Thank you for your leadership. By the way, we had a beautiful mass back in February, just about the anniversary of that terrible night. And he had a mass at St. Kevin's. The bishop was there. It was a beautiful, beautiful mass, Father Marciano. So thank you. Thank you very much for all of us. <laughs> Governor McKee, I, I could have used the trooper escort here. <laughs> <laughs> I left New Hampshire at 10.30 this morning, folks. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, Congressman Magaziner, it's great to have you here. Uh, General Centracchio is back here. I know you're going to hear from him. He was adjutant general for me at the time of this terrible night and also headed all of emergency management. Uh, beside him, I haven't seen a good friend in a, several months, is Colonel Doherty. Brendan Doherty, who was Colonel of State Police. And uh, Brendan was by my side throughout all of that because uh, uh, it was a huge process making sure uh, we had accounted for everybody that night. All right, because there are a lot of missing persons reports. Some of them didn't match up with the number uh, of uh, souls that we had recovered. Uh, and Brendan and his team at the state police uh, worked incredibly hard and in a matter of days actually had rectified it all. And so we all could rest at least on that we had uh, recovered everyone. 20 years ago, I'm like you all. Seems like yesterday. Like you. Most of you, I remember it all. Every moment. You know, from the time I arrived here at that horrific night and that scene, uh, until we had recovered and identified every soul who passed on that night. I remember it like yesterday, going to the Crown Plaza twice a day, every day, morning and afternoon. Uh, to meet with the families whose worst fears had become reality, to update them on the progress that we were making in identifying loved ones. Etched on my brain and in my heart forever is the pain and the agony of that wait for the dreaded news for those families. I remember visiting so many who were hospitalized, some like Gina, in an induced coma, inside a completely germ-free room with no one allowed in except nurses that were completely gowned, not sure whether they would survive. Some didn't. Many of those who could speak to me asked me the same question as I went around from hospital to hospital. Governor, how come I survived? How come I survived? So many didn't. My spouse, my relatives, my friends. What do you say? What do you say? I remember saying, you know, no one knows. No one knows. But there is a reason. There is a reason you survived. With time, you'll find that reason. Look at Gina. Look at what she's done. You know, I'm 20 years older now. That makes me. <clears throat> I was 60 at the time. So do the math. Four and a half years ago, I lost the love of my life, my partner, soulmate, for 53 years. So my rock beside me every step throughout that tragedy. When she passed on, 
I ask myself the same question, the same question. My sister, who had lost her husband just three months before Sue, she sent me a card that I taped to the mirror in my room. And it was a saying from Ram Das, and it read, quote, we're all just walking each other home. We're all just walking each other home. The picture of a couple holding hands, walking. Well, it hit me and it struck a chord with me. I love that image. I realized then more deeply than ever that we're all on a journey on this earth. The length of the journey is joys and sorrows are unique to every single one of us. For those who were lost that night, their journey was short. We never know when our journey will be over. But the Lord has a plan for every one of us. At the end of our journey, he wants us home with him and with all those we walked with and loved so dearly. God bless you. Thank you, Governor Kacheri. Um, I have to just say very quickly, his wife Sue became a mom to so many of us. So her, his loss has become so important to us and we honor her memory today as well. I'd love, like to um, invite Governor Daniel McKee to come up and say a few words. Good afternoon. I'm humbled to be here today on this solemn site. We pay tribute to 100 lost lives Lost on Rhode Island's most tragic, one of my, Rhode Island's most tragic and difficult days. It was 20 years ago that our state was forever changed. A night that should have been reserved for celebration quickly turned into one of the unthinkable horrors. A hundred of our friends, family, and loved ones perished in the fire with hundreds more lives were forever altered. I walked through here a few months ago and went from station to station and there were families at, at, at the stations and they shared their stories. Uh, today, the same thing. I want to thank them for their courage to share the stories with us so that we always remember and that we know that we have families of those who lost their loved ones on that devastating day and know that forever Rhode Island always stands with you. We will never, ever forget your loved ones. I'm honored to be here alongside members of the congressional delegation, Senator Ma Congressman Magazina, and in particular, Governor Kachiri, whose steadfast leadership in the after aftermath of this tragedy inspired us all. Thank you, Governor. Next time you need state at the, at the border, state police, just call me up. I'll make sure that you get it. You have my number. And the governor has been very generous with his time as I transition to governor, into the governorship as well, uh, you know, sharing his experiences with me. I'm also so honored to be here with family, friends, loved ones, and survivors who have committed themselves to ensuring the memories of the hundred will always be memorialized here at this site. In particular, I'd like to thank Gina Russo, the president of the Station Fire Memorial Foundation. She has been a consistent inspiration and her dedication ensures that this memorial stands as a pointed reminder today, tomorrow, and every day. February 20th, 2003, was a moment where everyone knew where they were when they heard 
the news. The images we saw, either on television or in person, were unforgettable. But amid the, amid, amid the flames and the heartbreak, we saw an incredible courage, bravery, and heroism. Governor Kachiri referred to our first responders. To Colonel Dowdy, General Satakio. Now, we hold those impacted by this tragedy close in our hearts. We also remember the remarkable, courageous actions of first responders, public safety officials, medical professionals, and Rhode Islanders who sprang into action to save lives on that day and who worked to comfort their communities in the days and weeks following. At that time, I was a mayor of the town of Cumberland. I know our rescue responded. That is the true spirit of Rhode Island, and it's on display here at this memorial site and across our 39 cities and towns. The fire that occurred here 20 years ago impacted and affected so many lives. Everyone has a connection to that day. But it is the inspiring leadership of the survivors and family members who make sure that lives were not lost in vain, that they are remembered. Whether it's a teacher who happened to have a student at one time uh, that's here today, a family member. Uh, personally, I know some of them. They have shared their stories over the years. This memorial serves as a permanent reminder for generations to come about the lives these men and women led and the positive contributions they made for all of us. Today is a day to reflect on the importance of family, friends, neighbors, and loved ones. We all come together in times of tragedy. We support one another. We celebrate the loves, the love we have for our family members who are here with us today and who are no longer with us. Rhode Island stands united in its support of the victims, survivors, and every person who was touched by this tragedy. On behalf of the people of the state of Rhode Island, as governor, I send the sympathies from the people of the state to each and every family member, to each and every person uh, who was impacted in any way uh, by that event in February 2003. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. At this time, I'd like to ask Congressman Seth Magazina to come up and say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is an honor to be here, along with Governor McKee, Governor Kacheri, Colonel Doherty, General Centracchio, uh, Gina Russo, and all of the survivors and volunteers who have made this special place a reality. Uh, it is hard to believe that it has been 20 years. February 20th, 2003, a night that hundreds of people came together, united by their love of music. A hundred of those individuals did not make it home, and hundreds more were left scarred for the rest of their lives. The fire ripped a hole in our community and left a deep scar on Rhode Island, one which we still feel every day. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone in our state who didn't know somebody who was there that night. And there's no right or wrong way to feel about it. It is okay to feel angry. It is okay to feel anguish. It is okay to feel uncertain about the future, but I ask that we also all feel gratitude for living in a state that is so small and so tight-knit, a state where we look out for each other. And on that night, and in the days that followed, we saw that on full display, the first responders who came here to the scene and risked their own lives to help others, the nurses and doctors and medical professionals and volunteers and ordinary people who stood up and said, what can I do? The volunteers and community members who made this memorial a reality. Here in Rhode Island, 
We stick together. We look out for one another. More than other places around the country, we are a family. And so we come together today to mourn those we lost, to support the family and friends of those who didn't make it home, but also to renew that spirit of connectedness that we share as Rhode Islanders. It is an honor, but also a responsibility that I take very seriously to represent this community in Congress. And one of my first actions when I took office this year was to give a speech on the floor of the House commemorating the 20th anniversary of the station fire and entering the names of the 100 angels into the congressional record where their memory will live forever. Uh, I have a copy uh, of that resolution uh, that I will present to Gina. And I want to just thank all of you once again for being a part of this special community where we live together, we work together, we grieve together, and we support each other above all, no matter what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Magazina. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Christina Puckett, who is one of our board members, our secretary, she plays many roles, and she was instrumental along with Robin Petrocker in getting this organized today. They stepped up, um, I was busy with some family stuff, and I um, thank them for that, but I'd like to ask Christina to come up and say a few words. At this time, I would like to have Mr. Sean Doyle and the students of the West Warwick High School FOM program to take their place at their new monument in the back. Twenty years ago, twenty years has gone by and yet it still feels like yesterday. Being a teacher in the town of West Warwick, I feel as though it is important to teach our students the meaning behind this beautiful park. We wanted to tie our local youth into this service, so when I reached out to Mr. Sean Doyle at West Warwick High School with a crazy idea and a very short timeline, he didn't hesitate to take the call. So Sean and the students of the Facilities Operation and Management Program took this idea and created something absolutely beautiful. So today they're going to be unveiling a new permanent monument that is going to be our park forever. These teachers and students worked endless hours creating this monument, and the piece has 100 hearts that represents all of our 100 angels, as well as the plaque for the 20th anniversary. Sean Doyle and some of his students are here today, and they're right in the back. We want to thank you for helping to keep the memory of the 100 angels alive. Although 20 years has passed, we will always remember. So we want to unveil it, and on your way out, if everyone can take a look at their hard work, Thank you again. Finally, I would like to introduce General Reginald Centracchio to come up and say a few words. Governor Kaichiri, you talked about your age. I, would, I was a graduate from West Warwick High School in 1958, so most of you weren't here, so I feel really old, too. <laughs> First of all, I, I want to uh, recognize Governor Kaichiri, Congressman Magaziner, Colonel Doherty, Father Marciano. I'm honored and privileged to be here as part of this. In my 48 years of service, I had the fortunate and unfortunate experience to be part of memorials back to World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, and our current wars going on. Each of those brought a particular experience to me. I became a very rich man, not financially, but in the form of stories that I heard for the very first time and some for the very last time. I can share with you that 
one of the last things that a person has on his or her mind when they share this with you is, will you take care of my family? And that's what we're doing today. The second thing is, will you remember me? And those are two things that came out time after time. Not only the times that we lost our soldiers in combat, but those that we lost in the station fire. This particular memorial has a special and unique application to all of us. It's local. We know everybody. We know each other. That is not the case in most memorials. What I'd like you to do when you leave here today, and perhaps when everyone's left, and I've used this several times and it really works. When you leave here, come back with only you and those particular stones with a face on it. And if you lean over, you'll hear a story. And that story will come right at you. And they'll ask you, do you remember me? And are you taking care of my family? And I think each of us can answer that question affirmatively. In public safety, there are three basic R's. Respond, which was a magnificent response in the state. Colonel Doherty and state police and all of our first responders were ex absolutely magnificent. And I just stood there in awe to see it unfold. The next has to do with rescue. And I saw that too. Many people were rescued and saved their lives. The third is recover. That was also an experience. Governor Kacheri and his team set an example for all of us as to how. How do you respond? How do you act? And how do you answer the question? As he said, why am I here? And will you remember me? So when you leave here, please do that. Come back and have a visit with each of these stones. They're only pieces of granite with writings on it, but there's a spirit in it too. And that will come to you because this is who we are in this state. We're a small state, but we are the greatest state. Gina, thank you so much on behalf of all of us. We are steadfast efforts to continue this. We had a brief conversation earlier. It's up to you and your children to make sure this monument maintains its present configuration and people take care of it. God bless Eve to you. God bless the United States and God bless the state of Rhode Island and those that made the last sacrifice here. Thank you. Time, we're going to have a special performance by Joe Silver. Many years ago, he wrote the song 97 Angels, pretty much the night that this all went down. Um, he has since he's got his wording, and you'll hear him, he'll include all of our 100. But um, thank you, Joe, for wanting to be here today. Thank you so much, Gina. It's uh, two decades since I've been singing this song here, and I just really want to say uh, thanks to the entire Station family for adopting me uh, into your family and this song, which I uh, wrote in the hours um, after the fire. Our Governor Kacheri had come on television to say that 97 uh, people had perished here. And having played here for so many years, as a matter of fact, my band uh, had its 20th anniversary concert celebration here at the station just a few years before the station burnt um, so I just feel 
blessed and honored to be able to honor all these hundred angels year after year. I'm gonna, Governor Kacheri, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you. I can uh, probably speak for most people here that they don't make governors like you anymore. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. I just want to remark, too, that um, you know, a lot has changed in the 20 years since we lost our angels. And certainly, if we believe that they're angels, we must be believing that Jesus Christ exists. He's the Savior. He's the only way to heaven. And I guess and the person I really wanted to speak to has already left. There's an empty seat there. And what I would have said is just out of the Bible. What does a man profit? by gaining the whole world. If you forfeit your very soul. Be strong, stay with Christ, and resist evil. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. I've heard that song so many times, but it still goes right to the heart. At this time, um, we ask you to um, really listen. We're gonna be playing the reading of the 100 names of our 100 angels who left us, some that very night, some months later. Um, they will never, ever be forgotten. 
and it is our mission and with this park that you all never forget and we keep their spirits alive so listen to their names and just remember every one of them at this time Lewis Alves, 33, from Lincoln. Kevin Anderson, 37, from Warren. Stacy Angers, 30, from Worcester, Massachusetts. Christopher Aruda, 30, from Coventry. Eugene Avales, 21, from Burlington, Massachusetts. Tina Ayer. 33, from Warwick. Collar Backtech, 41, from Randolph, Massachusetts. Mary H. Baker, 32, from Fall River, Massachusetts. Thomas Barnett, 38, from West Greenwich. Lauren Boucher, 35, from West Warwick. Stephen T. Bloom, 38, from Cranston. William Christopher Bernardi, 37, from Cranston. Christine Carbone, 38, from Taunton, Massachusetts. Richard A. Cabral, Jr., 37, from Attleboro, Massachusetts. William Cartwright, 42, from Pawtucket. Edward B. Corbett III from West Warwick. Michael Cordier, 31, from West. Alfred Chrysotom, 38, from Providence. Robert Croto, 32, from Fall River, Massachusetts. Lisa D'Andrea, 42, from Barrington. Matthew P. Darby, 36 from Coventry. Tina Ann DeMeo, 30 from West Warwick. Albert Anthony de Bonaventura, 18 from North Dighton, Massachusetts. Rachel K. Florio de Petro, 31 from Providence. Christina de Rienzo, 37 from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Kevin J. Dunn, 38, from Attleboro, Massachusetts. Lori K. Duran, 40, from West Warwick. Edward Urbanian, 29, from Cranston. Thomas Fleming, 30, from Worcester, Massachusetts. Mark A. Fontaine, 22, from Johnston. Chief Petty Officer Daniel Fredrickson, 37 from Coventry. Michael Frisolo, 33 from Worcester, Massachusetts. James Gayen, 21 from Falmouth, Massachusetts. Melvin Griffin, 46 from Groton, Connecticut. Laura Gillette, 32 from Pembroke, Massachusetts. Charlene E. Gingras Fick, 36, from Pawtucket. Michael James Gonzalez, 40, from West Warwick. James Gooden, 37, from Cranston. Derek Gray, 22, from Drinkett, Massachusetts. Pamela Gritadaria, 33, from Johnson, Rhode Island. Scott Green, 35, from Warwick. Scott Griffith, 41, from West Warwick. Bonnie L. Hamelin, 27, from Warwick. Jude Hinault, 37, from Lisbon, Connecticut. Andrew Hoban, 22, from North Kingstown. Abby L. Huizington, 28, from Cranston. Michael Hugasian, 31, from Cranston. 
Sandy, Caucasian, 31, from Cranston. Carlton Bud Howard, the third, from Norton, Massachusetts. Eric J. Hyde, 32, from Coventry. Derek Brian Johnson, 33, from West Warwick. Lisa Kelly, 27, from Swansea, Massachusetts. Tracy F. King, 39, from Warren. Michael Joseph Culls, 30, from Warren. Keith Lapierre, 29, from Worcester, Massachusetts. Dale Letulipe, 46, from Carver, Massachusetts. Stephen M. Libera, 21, from North Kingstown. John M. Longeru, 23, from Johnston. Ty Longley, 31, Northridge, California. Andrea Mancini, 28, from Johnston. Keith Mancini, 34, from Cranston. Stephen Mancini, 40, from Johnston. Judith Manza, 37, North Providence. Thomas Marion Jr., 27, from Westport, Massachusetts. Jeffrey Martin, 33, from Melrose, Rhode Island. Tammy Matera Hausa, 29, from Warwick. Kristen McWurry, 37, from Coventry. Thomas Medeiros, 40, from Coventry. Samuel Maselli, 37, from Lisbon, Connecticut. Donna M. Mitchell, 29, from Fall River, Massachusetts. Lee Ann Morrow, 22, from Providence. Ryan M. Morin, 32, from Austin, Massachusetts. Jason Morton, 38, from West Greenwich. Beth E. Michinski. 33, from Millbury, Massachusetts. Catherine O'Donnell, 26, from Seacock, Massachusetts. Nicholas Philip O'Neill, 18, from Cranston, Rhode Island. Matthew James Pickett, 23, from Bellingham, Massachusetts. Carlos L. Pimentel Sr., 38, from West Warwick. Christopher Prouty, 34, from Pawtucket. Jeffrey Rader, 32, from Danville, California. Teresa Rakowski, 30, from Taunton, Massachusetts. Robert L. Reisner III, 29, from Coventry. Walter Rich, 40, from Attleboro, Massachusetts. Donald Rodriguez, 46, from Mashpee, Massachusetts. Tracy Romanoff, 32, from Coventry. Joseph Rossi, 35, from Kentucky. Bridget Sinetti, 25, from Coventry. Rebecca Becky Shaw, 24, from Warwick. Mitchell Schubert, 39, Berry, Florida. Dennis Smith, 36, from Pawtucket. Victor Stark, 39, from West Yarmouth, Massachusetts. Benjamin Suffoletta, 43, from Gloucester. Linda Suffoletta, 43, from Gloucester. Sean Sweet, 28, from Pembroke, Massachusetts. Jason Sylvester, 24, from Coventry. Sarah Jane Togarski, 38, from Plainfield, Connecticut. Kelly Vieira, 40, from West Warwick. Kevin Washburn, 30, from Franklin, Massachusetts. Everett Tommy Wittancy, 30, from Charlestown. Robert Daniel Young, 
29 from Taunton, Massachusetts. Sometimes you think it gets easier. It does not. Um, I know it's warm, um, and I hope you can all bear with me because I have a it's been a long 20 years, and I have a few things that I'd like to say. Um, first and foremost, um, thank you so much to our distinguished guest. You have been there. You have never left our side, and I can't thank you enough. To my family, my children, my husband, my nieces and nephews. Thank you, thank you for staying with me all this time. I would like to acknowledge and thank Viviana Fernandez for being brave enough to stand up here and sing our national anthem. She did an incredibly beautiful job. Um, I would like to thank Carlos and Colin Pimentel. They are not here, they had to go coach a soccer game, I believe. Um, they have taken over the landscaping of our beautiful park and they have truly, truly done it with pride because they lost their dad on that tragic night. So let's thank them. This, it's beautiful. Joe Silva, thank you for always coming back and singing that beautiful song to honor our 100. And to David from Entertainment Under the Stars for always stepping up and being our sound guy out here. Thank you. And the last but not least, and I'm not sure where he went, um, Jim Colucci from Coincidin. He has, he has been everything to all of us. Thank you, Jim. So I am a little extra emotional today. Um, there were two very, very important people that are not here today. One of them passed on July 20, uh, excuse me, July 11th of 2022. Her name is Stephanie Noela. Now, a lot of you know her name. She was this Blue Cross nurse who became our, our lifeline when I was in the hospital, when our, many of us were in the hospital. And she jumped on board and helped people. She had no clue who we were. And she never left. She was there, part of the station family fund that helped raise funds so that we could live on a daily basis. Stephanie passed on July 11th of 2022 and she is missed terribly. This is a tough one for me. Um, this morning we received a phone call that another survivor and fellow board member of the station family fund who was 
incredible, larger than life, um, passed this morning, early this morning. His name is Todd King. And some of you may know him, and I know my survivors do. Todd, <laughs> I hope he knows how much we love him. And he couldn't, he was supposed to be here. And life had other plans, I guess. Uh, so please keep our family and friends and their, their loved ones in your thoughts and prayers, especially today. <laughs> I also want to talk about a very special, special friend of mine who um, is going to be retiring soon from the State Fire Marshal's office. His name is Vinny Conterno. Him and I met um, at a speaking engagement. We were there to talk about the same tragedy. He's in from the fire marshal perspective and a crowd management program that was created by him and a few others after this tragic fire. Vinny had a goal that when it hit the 20th anniversary, he wanted to have 10,000 um, owners and, and crowd, man, crowd um, management people certified by this date exceeded his goal and we're so honored um, that he cared enough and I think we all owe Vinny a round of applause because this state has become safer because of him. <laughs> also, um, so there's been a little bit of a transition. Um, I'm not going to live forever. My board members that are still standing and so we made the decision this year to um, work with the Rhode Island Foundation. As you know, some of you are very familiar with them, and they have helped with our children to go to school and an education fund. Well, we made a decision this year um, after they, I am thankful, approached me about combining and working with us in making sure that this park was always taken care of. So we have given them some of our funds. They have contributed to that and we now have security that there will always be perpetual care at this park. I'm honored that they chose to step up and work with us. Um, it has been an honor for me as a survivor to represent the 100 who passed and I hope that we've I've done justice and my board members that if past and present, the ones that were there from day one to the ones that are still standing. We could not have done this without this community, without our leaders, and I'm proud and thankful for that. But I will say this, I am extremely tired. <laughs> um, I know I can't do it alone anymore. So if we are going to go forward with this. If there is going to be a 25th anniversary and a 30th anniversary, I pray to God I'm still around. But I need my village. This village has got to step up. If you want these next events to happen, let's get together. Let's form a committee because I can't continue to do it alone. I have family. I have this incredible group of grandchildren that I want to spend time with. And, I, and it's been a long haul. My family deserves that. My children do. So let's all get together. In the next few years, let's figure this out together so we can always make sure that our 100 are remembered. hope you get the opportunity to look around this beautiful park today. If it's your first time, thank you for coming. If it's your 100th, thank you. And we also need to say today is the sixth year anniversary of this park opening, so it was a pretty special day to have this. Thank you all. Thank you.